Hello and welcome. I'm Anna Wells, the Executive Editor of Industrial Distribution. Today I'll be joined in the studio by ID's Managing Editor, Mike Hockett, and we'll be walking you through the list of the top 50 industrial distributors based on revenue for fiscal year 2019. Over the past few days, we've identified companies number 50 through 11, and today we're here to bring you the top 10 MRO distributors based on their North American sales. Once again, a big thank you to our sponsor, Epicor Software. So let's not waste any time getting started. To make it in the top 10 this year, it actually takes nearly $3 billion in annual revenue. Houston's Now Incorporated, which conducts business as Distribution Now, slipped slightly over its 2018 sales figure as the oil and gas market began to dip. It has battled some significant headwinds since, reducing its headcount by 40% through the first half of 2020 as it transitions to a more centralized business model. The company appointed a new CEO, David Cherichinsky, in June. Our number nine company is MSC Industrial Supply, and here with more about the Melville, New York-based company is Mike Hockett. MSC Industrial Supply made two major executive appointments this past summer, naming Ingersoll Rand veteran Kristen Actus Grande as its new CFO, following the departure of Rustam Jilla from that position in January and Greg Clark filling in in the interim. And MSC appointed Faisal Hussein as its new Vice President of E-Commerce, from which the company derives about 60% of its sales. MSC has provided monthly sales updates throughout the pandemic, showing that elevated demand for its safety and Jan Sand products haven't been nearly enough to offset weakness in its core MRO and metalworking product lines. At number eight is Cleveland's Applied Industrial with 3.47 billion in sales, a significant increase over 2018 revenue that boosted the company two slots on the list. But just like every other company on this, Applied is experiencing a bumpy ride in 2020. The company's fiscal 2020 already ended in June, with the results illustrating just how much the pandemic has impacted the MRO market. After posting organic sales growth of 1.9% in 2019, Applied's 2020 organic sales dropped 18.4% year over year. But the company shared its MRO optimism in its latest earning report, citing the need for industrial products as U.S. manufacturing ramps back up and businesses look to reshore operations. MRC Global lands at number seven on our list at $3.66 billion. Much like the other Texas-based distributors with a heavy footprint in oil and gas, MRC began feeling the economic impacts of that market in 2019 when the company was forced to cut headcount by 10%. Unfortunately, this year hasn't improved its key end market, and CEO Andrew Lane has called 2020's Q2 MRC's most challenging to date, as the company's sales fell 39% year over year. Lane, who has led MRC since 2008, is retiring at the end of 2021. Employee-owned industrial construction and waterworks distributor Wind Supply has consistently moved up our list from number 14 in 2016 to now at its highest ever ranking, number six, with 3.92 billion in sales. The company has been on an acquisition tear in recent years, including six since the start of 2019. Wind Supply has been so active making bolt-ons that it created a new company in the fall of 2019, the Wind Supply Acquisitions Group, to manage it. Our number five company this year is Winona, Minnesota-based Fastenal, with $5.33 billion in sales. Out of all the publicly traded Big 50 distributors, perhaps none have fared better during the pandemic than Fastenal. Its ability to rapidly source PPE buoyed the company to Q2 sales growth of 10% year over year, despite considerable declines in its fasteners product segment. For more insight into Fastenal's situation, we spoke with company CEO, Dan Flornes. So I've been with Fastenal for 24 years. If I went back to the organization I joined in the mid 1990s, we were largely a fastener distributor, hence our name Fastenal, and that's what we've been for the first 30 years of our existence. Um, as we went through the 1990s, we were rapidly adding different product lines, but they were all individually relatively small in the scheme of things. Um, what really changed for us, and this was about a dozen years ago, we started to dabble in vending. And, and vending became an ever larger piece of our business. Today, vending is about 20% of our revenue. So it's a, it's a billion dollar plus business today. A big piece of what goes into the vending machine is PP&E. Our second biggest product line, um, if I go back six months ago, is safety products. 
and so it wasn't a it wasn't a new thing for us to kind of figure out on the fly. We know it well because we serve that marketplace every day. Probably what um, a big chunk of the marketplace didn't appreciate was maybe how good we were at it, or even that we we did it to the extent that we did. And and I think that's what really changed in the last four months, five months. People were desperate and they were reaching out to anybody for the phone phone calls that came to us or the, the inquiries that came to us, we were able to respond, not just with, we knew what they were talking about, but yeah, we had the product. And so safety uh, became our largest product line in the second quarter. And, uh, uh, but, but it wasn't a, it, it wasn't a, a, a new product line for us. Anyone following the market knows that our number four company, HD Supply, has seen some aggressive change over the past year. Here with more on that is Mike Hockett. HD Supply made one of the biggest headlines of 2019 when it said it would split into two equally sized companies, one for its facilities maintenance unit and one for construction and industrial, Whitecap. That was still the plan into at least Q2 of this year, but the company almost surprisingly announced in August that it will instead sell Whitecap to private firm Clayton Dubalier and Rice for $2.9 billion. Since that transaction hadn't closed before our video countdown debuted, HD's 2020 ranking reflects the company's state before that divestment. If you account for just the company's facilities maintenance unit, it ranked 10th on our list with $3 billion in sales. It's the latest and biggest of HD's overall downsizing over the past six years, having sold off its hardware segment in 2014, its power solution segment in 2015, its interior business solution segment in 2016, and waterworks segment in 2017. Built from the ground up, just for distribution, you can rely on Epicor Profit 21 to streamline, modernize, and grow your business with confidence. Our number three ranking company on this year's list is Airgas, with 2019 revenue of $6.2 billion. Acquired by Paris-based Air Liquide in late 2016, Airgas has remained relatively quiet over the past couple years, with its biggest acquisition being the March 2019 purchase of Tech Air, a fellow distributor of industrial gases and welding supplies. It added about $190 million to Airgas's revenue, 550 employees, and 45,000 customers. Airgas has made just over 500 acquisitions in its 38-year history. Motion Industries is our number two company, posting a whopping $6.53 billion in sales, which is an increase of a billion dollars over its 2018 sales figure. And aggressive growth is being fueled by acquisitions even now, as Motion has closed on three acquisitions this summer alone. Automation Distributor Applied Machine and Motion Control, TRC Hydraulics, and f &L Industrial. The AMMC edition, combined with 2019 Bolt-On Access New England and Access New York, have significantly expanded Motion's MI Automation Solutions Group. And our number one company, which comes as no surprise, is Granger, with a significant lead over the rest of the pack at $11.49 billion. The company's 2019 sales improved 2.4% from 2018, and with everyone from hospitals to government agencies relying on the company for PPE and safety products amid COVID-19, Granger's modest sales declines during the pandemic have been far smaller than most distributors on our list. Granger said the MRO market likely declined 14 to 15% during Q2 this year, but that the company was able to gain significant US market share. Granger divested its Favory and Granger China earlier this year as the company is focusing on key businesses and geographies. And despite the strange brew that's been 2020 thus far, Granger seems to be optimistic about the future. Jack Keough, former editor of Industrial Distribution and founder of the Big 50 list, had this to say about Granger. The resiliency of our Big 50 distributors is evident as they battle back from the pandemic that swept through our own economy and, and, and internationally. These companies have bounced back in the past through recessions, depressions, war, and an oil collapse. Probably a comment from Granger CEO, D.T. McPherson, represents the optimism of our industry when he said, we will come back stronger than ever before. And I think that's true. I think you're going to see a solid growth in business in the second part of this year. 
as well as a solid 2021. That wraps up this year's Big 50. We'd like to thank all of the participating companies, our contributors, as well as our sponsor, Epicor Software. I'm Anna Wells with Industrial Distribution, and thank you for joining us.